hey everyone so in this video we are going to learn that how we can change self access with multiple bugs to increase the impact of the vulnerability so before going to this video if you haven't checked out my previous video in which i have started a series in which the first video is about how you can hack windows machine using msf venom then go ahead and check it out the link is given in the description as well as you can see it on the right side of the screen and also for those who are new to our channel and haven't checked out our website yet, which is bepractical.tech, then just go and type bepractical.tech in your browser and you will be redirected to our awesome website over here, as you can see. So as you can see, this is the website over here. And as you can see, we have a lot of articles related to cybersecurity as well as web development. As you can see, we have bash scripting, we have vhost enumeration, we have the art of using Google Docs and so many interesting things, right? So definitely go ahead and check it out and the interesting thing is that if you go over to the lab section in the cyber security then you'll see that we are providing awesome labs related to cyber security uh, the labs are currently based on account takeovers as you can see right over here right and all of these labs are based on real world scenarios and there are logical vulnerabilities inside there so you need to use your brain you need to use your logical thinking to exploit this vulnerability to and, and hack anyone's account right so definitely give give them a try and now with that being said let's get started so for this particular video i'm going to use a lab that i have created so let me just open a new tab over here and this is the lab over here as you can see we have this login functionality over here and we have create an account functionality we have forget username functionality right so let me just log into my account let me show you what it is actually so let's type at man123 the password of mine and as you can see upon logging in we are getting redirected to our profile setting, right? So you may come across a website that is uh, something like this. Let me just show you that have something like this. Login question redirect to let's say dashboard, right? So you may come across some endpoint like this. So uh, keep this in mind. We are going to use this type of uh, endpoint later on to exploit this particular vulnerability. So as you can see, upon logging in, we are directly redirected to the profile settings right to the profile endpoint now here we have the name we have email address let's try to modify any one of this so for example let's say batman and let's give a less than and a greater than symbol save this out we are getting logged out let's try to log in again three and as you can see the name has been saved let's view the source code and let's see how this application is handling the dangerous characters and over here, as you can see, we are getting the dangerous characters getting rendered as, as it is, right? Which means that there is no security implementation. Now, the second thing is that let's try to execute a JavaScript code or a XSS, right? Let's try to do script alert, script that close. Let's click on submit. Again, we are getting re redirected to the logout section. Let's try to log it again. And as you can see, we got the alert one popped up, right? But now if you think about it, this is actually a self access, right? Because we cannot deliver this XSS payload or this endpoint to the vector, right? Which means that it is actually an self-based XSS. Now let's try to escalate it. To escalate it, we need to have few more vulnerabilities in this particular application. The first is login and logout CSRF, right? So if we head over to this uh, logout endpoint, let me show you. We we'll see that we are getting logged out, right? And now let's analyze the request of logging in. Let me just refresh it. Let's try to log in. Let's try to click on login. And as you can see, we have this request over here. This profile page we are getting redirected at. And now if you see, we have uh x frame origin option present over here and, and over here we have this is in the response and this is the login now over here if you see the data that are getting passed so these are the data that are, get, that are getting passed right in the request parameter and there is no csr protection as well right so we have identified three vulnerabilities over here the first one is the login csrf right the second one is the logout csrf and the third is the self accesses right now we can actually chain these three vulnerabilities to create a bigger impact let me show you how we can do that right so the attack scenario is something like this let me just open a notepad so what we are going to do is 
Let me just open a new file over here. So first, we are going to uh, log out the user. Then, we are going to log in the user with our credentials, right? Which means the attacker. Ah, oh, sorry. Attack. Then, we are going to use the click jacking vulnerability present over here. Right now, if you think about it, click jacking is not present over here, but we know that we can execute excesses, which means that we can also execute HTML injections, right? So now we can use that HTML injection to serve a fake, uh, malicious page, right? That can be used as a click jacking, right? So we can present a click jacking page, right? And finally, the click checking page will contain something sensitive for example let's say it will contain login information like please you need to log uh, you need to uh, provide your login username and password once again right something like this so an attacker uh, may easily trick a victim into this right because let me show you and now if the attacker sorry if the victim uh, stores the sensitive credentials then it will be served to the attack right so this is an attack scenario that we are going to do right we have confirmed that this is vulnerable this application is vulnerable to log out uh, csrf we have confirmed that this application is vulnerable to log a csrf because there is no csrf token or any csrf uh, protection mechanism present in this login and logout functionally right even in the real life scenarios you will often see that these functionalities are always left untouched right they are actually uh, very much vulnerable to these type of attacks right now the second and third thing is that the csrf oh, sorry the click checking vulnerability over here this one is actually vulnerable why because we are able to execute the javascript file right and if we check the uh, network let's show you we can see that the profile endpoint uh just show you the headers see this is the header right to so x frame option is set to same origin right which means that the same origin servers can actually create or embed an iframe right so since we are actually adding an iframe tag over here which means that it is originating from the same server which means that we were able to bypass this particular x frame options right now using the, all of these techniques that we have found in this particular application we can create a beautiful impact let me show you how so let's create an html page let's open my linux let's create a file on the desktop let's say uh, test.html right which will have uh, html head title attack let's go to the body now let's create a form the action will be login right why login because we have identified let me just go back just log out first let's open the network As you can see, there is a post request getting sent on this login endpoint, right? With the parameters, email and password. So that's what we are going to do now. So let's just create one. So we have login and the method is going to be post. Then let's provide the input type will be text. name will be let's say uh, email the value will be payas at the rate bpractical.tech which is the attacker's account right now we are also going to hide this so that no user is going to see what is actually over here in this form now we have again a new input Type is going to be text again. 
the name is this time it is password the value is the password of the attacker's account which is batman123 let's hide this and now let's create button button type is submit let's say click here let's close button Close the body, head, and HTML. Right? And now, the last thing that we will be doing is we will be sending the request to the logout endpoint first so that we can log out the attacker. How we can do that? Right? So we can just do img src equals to, and let's see the application. This is the IP address. Let's copy this and let's paste it over here. And let's go log out. Right now, this tag is going to try to send a GET request to this particular endpoint. So it will indirectly lead us to logging out the victim's uh, credential. Right. So we will be getting logged out as a victim. Now, once we are logged out, then we will submit this. And after that, we'll get logged in as an attack in the attacker's account. Let's just copy this. Save it. And now let's test it out. So now, as you can see, we have this particular uh, endpoint over here. Right, we have this particular form that we have created. Let's click on click here. And let me just show you that we are not logged in right now. As you can see, let's click on this. As you can see, it is showing that it is actually failed. So it is failed because I think I've given the wrong credential. Let me just modify it again. So the email is this, whether it be practical dot tech the password is batman123 so just cross check it the endpoint is this right it's good let's verify it let me just run it again let's resend it and if we see the request body we have email for yours at the rate bpractical.tech and the password is batman123 let me just cross check it yeah so the password is actually right uh, in the email let me just verify the parameters maybe we are getting this error because of the parameter let's test it out Batman one two three. I'm gonna log in. We have email. We have pass. Right. So instead of this password, we have pass. That's what is getting this error. Let's fix it out real quick. So we have pass, and now we are good to go. Let's try to run 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 it again. Let's click on click here. Let me just log out from this application. Right. And now final thing is let's click on click here. And as you can see, we are logged in as the attackers. Uh, so as you can see, we are logged in as the attacker. Right. And now I can do whatever I want. Right. Now I can just add an iframe. For example, let's say I am an attacker and I am adding this uh, iframe over here just for demonstration. Iframe, let's save it out. Now we are good to go, right? Let me just open the test file again. And now let's see the impact of this, right? Suppose I am a victim now, and now 
the attacker served in this particular CSRF. So the first thing has been done. We are getting, uh, we have uh, logged out the victim account. Now, if I click here, we'll see that we are redirected to the profile setting and we have this beautiful iframe injected over here, right? So now I have injected this php.vulnerweb.com. We can create a custom page, right? That can fit over here or we can increase the size of this particular iframe, right? Which will display something like login again or something alert, right? Now, we have created an impact from the self accesses, right? By chaining self accesses with login and logout CSRF and click chat, right? So this is how we can chain multiple bugs. Now you may be thinking that many times we cannot go to the profile setting directly, right? Or to the vulnerable endpoint directly, right? So many applications have this particular endpoint, right? Have this particular functionality, which is something like this. Read the uh, login, question redirect to dashboard right so you can actually do something like this so instead of this dashboard you can just change it to let's say the vulnerable endpoint whether you are getting the self accesses right for example you are getting it at the profile setting you can do something like this then what we can do now is we can send a request right and after that we can check whether how the request is getting handled right so maybe you'll get this particular redirect parameter in the post request as well right so just create a poc with that particular uh, post value using in your csr right and now the attacker will be redirected so, sorry the victim will be redirected to wherever you want right so this is how we can increase the impact of self access vulnerability i hope that you have understood it if you have any doubts if you have any issues then feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also do join our Telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under cybersecurity as well as web development. And if you like the way I teach, then I am currently running two courses. The first one is Bug Bounty, the ultimate guide to hunt account takeovers, wherein you're going to learn that how hackers can actually dive deep into the application to find vulnerabilities that can result in taking over anyone's account. And the second course is Hacking Windows with Python, wherein you're going to learn that how hackers can create their own custom malware that can be used to hack any Windows machine without getting detected by any antivirus that can execute system commands and do a bunch of cool stuff, right? So definitely go ahead and check them out if you want to. And now with that being said, keep learning and thanks for watching.